Yeah, g'day, and welcome back to my channel. Now, somebody out there has the answer to this question, and I need it, please. How do you get a Lensa VFD, an 8200 series, into coast down mode? And more to the point, how do I get it out of that? Let me explain in more detail. Spindle breaking. There's always been two options for this. I do have a 24 volt electromechanical brake integrated into the motor, or I could use a braking resistor on the variable frequency drive. I was always kind of focused on that electromechanical brake, but I got a lot of recommendations from you guys to go with a braking resistor, and it took me a while to realize that, yeah, you're right. On the one hand, I've run out of 24 volt outputs in the lathe, so I'd have to do something to put in a new expansion card to get an extra output to control that electromechanical brake. The resistor has this advantage. Now my spindle drive system on this lathe is pretty complex. In fact, overly complicated, most would say, because I start off with a three-phase motor controlled by a variable frequency drive, and then that power goes through an infinitely variable mechanical drive, a variator, to get to a back gear, where you can nomadically select between one-to-one -one speed ratio or a speed reduction of one to seven. And then from there, it's got a big wide tooth belt up to the spindle. The advantage of that system is that it was already in there, so I didn't have to change anything mechanical other than putting the variable frequency drive on it. Without any form of spindle brake, I end up with a very, very slow rundown. Let's take a look. This is at 3000 RPM. Now waiting 15 seconds for that spindle to stop spinning is both annoying and also a safety issue. So let's do something about it. Now if I just use the existing electromechanical brake to stop the motor each time I command the spindle stop, that would work, but it doesn't address this. Every combination of stock material and cutting tool has got an optimum surface speed that you want this to be running over the surface at. It's written on the back of the insert packets. For example here, it says for P, which I think is steel, ideally you want about 150 meters per minute of surface speed with a range of 100 to 200. And they have the same in feet as well. Now the surface speed of a spinning part is going to be dependent upon the radius. Starting with a big part, you're going to want reasonably slow RPM. And as you increase towards the center, it has to accelerate and accelerate. And CNC machines and some of the top end manual machines can do that. The problem I have with this setup is because I've got so much inertia in my drive system and no way to dump the energy into my VFD, you'll see when I demonstrate this that the spindle will accelerate as it does the constant surface speed cut, and then as it comes back out it needs to decelerate back to its original speed. However, it moves out faster than it decelerates, you find that the spindle is still decelerating, although the tool has started its second cut. Progress, that second cut can progress quite a distance before the spindle's decelerated enough for it to start accelerating again. To fix that, I need a braking resistor. That will allow the inertial energy in this whole drive system to back drive the motor as a generator, and the VFD can dump that generated power into that resistor. Mail time. Oh, brilliant. So on the Zerspannungsbude German speaking forum, a, a nice gentleman called Daniel found that there was an auction for diamond and cubic boron nitride internal grinding wheels and stuff. And it was quite a big auction. It was, I think, 350 bucks or 370 bucks or something worth. And it was too much for him. So he offered, why don't we get together and buy it as a group? And I jumped in on this, so I got sort of 10% of the, the bits. 
And there's a whole nice variety here of these grinding stones. Fantastic. Some new, some used. I hate to think what this sort of stuff would have cost new. One of the things that came along in the auction were these, which is a set of grinding wheel balance weights. Since I've got a bunch of grinding wheels to make, I said, well, hey, I'd, I'd be happy to take less of this and more of that. Thanks very much for organizing this, uh, Daniel. But I'll have to go through and make up match sets out of them. I mean, I don't really have a need for these at the moment, but they're the sort of thing that only comes up very, very rarely. And I figured it'd be nice to have a set. And this I got off eBay. Okay, so as you can see, I bought two different units, and the reason for that is stupidity. First, I researched and found this brake resistor matches my VFD. So that's all nice and good, so I bought it. But then, I actually read a bit closer in the manual and found out that this doesn't connect directly to the VFD. It needs a module in between. And Lenser offers two different modules, what they call the brake module or a brake chopper. And it turns out that this brake module is the one that's designed for light to medium loads and has a built-in load resistor inside it, therefore the, the heatsink. Whereas this one is only used with the brake chopper, which has no built-in brake resistor. But this is designed for heavy loads, like constant braking, I'm thinking maybe some sort of conveyor that's carrying something down a hill or something where it's being back-driven the whole time. That was a waste of 100 bucks buying that because this is all I need. Okay, so the wiring on this is pretty simple because there's only three. I need to get a ground up to here and I need to connect plus U and minus U to plus U and minus U here. I like to label all this stuff because otherwise in about two days I won't remember what I did. So you can see that's the way I mark them. I just put those labels on and then put some clear heat shrink over the top of them. Now according to the manual, I'm supposed to have shielding over at least 75% of this wiring to this brake. Now I found a piece of copper braid. Might be a little bit shorter than 75%, but um, yeah, I'll just go with it. So I'm just putting a solder sleeve on here to connect a pigtail to the bonding. Yeah, there it goes. Solder's melted. Oh, I put a bit of more sleeving over it, but it's not actually necessary, is it? That's already completely sleeved, but oh well. Since I've got it there, I might as well use it. And then a bit more shrink wrap as kind of a strain relief over the whole thing. Now, it's a bit annoying that those come out the top because I didn't put a cable canal at the top but I'll just make it work. I've spent time nearly every night this week trying to get my VFD back out of coast down mode. Now this is a Lensa 8214. It's a pretty old one, it's a pretty simple sort of one I think. Doesn't have a huge number of parameters. Now when I first installed the VFD if I tried to decelerate too fast from 70 hertz I'd get overcurrent warnings on the VFD. This shows that it was trying to break but couldn't dump the energy. I must have found the parameter which told it to disconnect the load and just let it coast down. So it's a pretty simple VFD. Go into all your parameters. For example, ramp down should be parameter 13. I've got it set for four seconds. You can see the ramp up. But as soon as I switch off, it switches the output off, which to me means it's still in coasting mode. So I've been through every single parameter of this thing, checked all of them, there's nothing that seems like it would help. I've done a factory reset, that also didn't change anything. I wonder if I've damaged a transistor or diodes or something in the output, and therefore that's the reason it's just staying in bypass mode. Once again, 
all ears. Anybody's got some advice as to how to set an old Lenser 8214 back into uh, braking mode, please let me know in the comment section. Thanks a lot for watching.